Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. praise him we want to lift him up and uh, he's worthy to be praised in this house today and uh, we're we're looking forward for the day service and uh, just open up your hearts and minds and and uh, just receive from the Lord today would be my encouragement to you now uh, praise the Lord I I don't remember just how many years he's been here but uh, it's going on 24 Pastor Mark 1998, y'all do the math, 25, amen, but uh, he's still holding up good, and uh, I believe today is his birthday, and uh, I got a second on that, so we're going to sing happy birthday to Pastor Mark, and uh, stand up there, Pastor, and uh, do you appreciate you, Pastor, amen, me too, and uh, let's see, I Pretty sure he hadn't made it to that 7 0 yet, so we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but we want to sing happy birthday. Come on, help me now, would you? Happy birthday to you. November birthday babies do we have today? November the birthday. Gwen, all right, who else? I know we got more in November than that, right there. Y'all just come on up here and we'll sing it to you. All of you. I should have done that, but we're going to do it now. All right, all you November birthday babies, all right? Come on. Is I believe somebody's holding back on me. Come on up here, Rose. Come on. I appreciate all of our church family. Uh, you know, somebody has a need, it goes out there, and people begin to pray, and uh, God hears our prayers. And uh, any more November? Is there any Novembers up here? All right, all right we're going to sing it to them. Man. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. celebrating Thanksgiving but you know every every day is a, a day when we should give thanks and and uh, have gratitude for all that God does for us and his hand working in our lives and uh, if you get to thinking about all he does for you man I tell you what you just get tore up from the floor up and uh, I love him today he's awesome you know don't get so busy as you do this week uh, that you don't take time to thank God and uh, I kid Marty every now and then I, I rarely call her Martha except when I know she's kind of getting all wound up about things and uh, but I remember what our Lord uh, told Martha he told her you, you're too busy with all these things and sometimes we get too busy with all the things and we forget to get at his feet and worship him and praise him in spirit and truth. So make sure you make plenty of time every day to do that. And uh, Leon's going to lead us in one here a minute that just tells us to just that. Thank the Lord for your blessings on, on me.
we're going to sing some songs about being thankful, but I want to start out with welcome Holy Spirit. And uh, would you just agree with me today that we invite the Holy Spirit in this service today? You know, He came in inside of you. Amen. And He's everywhere in this place. So let's just uh, let's just get hooked up with Him. Amen. Today and in agreement with one another. Man, we're just going to have a good time in the Lord. Stand to your feet. He's worthy of our praise. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. You're the living water. You're the for praying for my father-in-law and hopefully he get to come home today and, and uh, I'm just grateful I'm just grateful he's awesome the Lord 
Lord is good and his mercy endures forever and ever. And uh, I don't know if you get a, every now and then you kind of get a bad, some bad thinking. Some bad thinking sometimes is just you forget how good God is to you. You forget how good he's blessed you and, and uh, the many things you do have when you whining about something that you don't have. You're probably better off without it. But my, my, I love him today. And uh, it's good to come together. Some others are coming in. And uh, I, I'm just grateful for God's house when believers gather together. I, I'd like to see somebody get saved in the house today. If you don't know him, you need to find him as your Lord and Savior. You know, I'd like to see somebody filled with the Holy Ghost today. You're going to make it in these end times. You're going to need the end filling of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, it'll be a good day. And if you come in with pain in your body, you don't need to go away that way. The Bible tells me that by His stripes, the Son of God, the Son of the living God, He suffered stripes that we might be healed. Amen. Glory to God. Claim it. Hold to it. Amen. And have a good time in His house. Glory to God. I like this one. Usually around Thanksgiving, we'll sing at least once. And Leon's going to lead us in it. Simply says, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Yes. And uh, how many can agree with me yes. today, Lord? Thank you for your blessings on me. You know, I've seen many of you. Well, I've seen you laying up in the hospital. And they said, well, you ain't going to make it. <laughs> and you made it. i seen many of you when they said, hey, man, the cancer's got you. And you ain't going to come out of it. Well, you're here today. <laughs> Amen. I've seen many of you when you was down and broken heart. And uh, God come in, Lord, with the power of the Holy Ghost and lifted you up and brought you up. Hallelujah. So we got plenty to thank you for today. Leon, lead us in. As the world looks around me, as I struggle along, Say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart I'm rejoicing, how I wish they could see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on There's a roof up above me, I'm a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Seems on me. Well, I know I'm not wealthy, and these clothes they're not new. I don't have much money, but Lord, I have you, and to me, that's all that matters. Oh, the world may not see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. For there's a roof up above me. I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table. And shoes on my feet You gave me your love, Lord And a fine family Thank you, Lord For your blessings on me Sing that chorus a cappella And there's a roof up above me I've a good place to sleep. 
There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. I want to thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Come on, give him a hand of praise. <laughs> oh, he's worthy. He's worthy. Amen. Let our praise go up today unto the Lord. Let my praise go up. Let my praise go up. Let my praise go up. Let your glory come down. Sing it again. Let my praise go up. Let my praise go up. Let my praise go up. Let your glory come down.
Well, he's worthy, church. I said he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Says, I got so much to be thankful for. You got anything to be thankful for today? Yeah. Amen. Just whisper it over to your neighbor. Say, hey, I, I got a lot to be thankful for. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Leon's going to lead us in this one. Do y'all sing it out? When I look around and see the good things. That he does for me, I know I'm unworthy of him all. Still his blessings he freely gives, I owe my whole life to him. I've got so much to thank him for. I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for. You see, He's been so good to me. And when I think of what He's done and where He brought me from, I've got so to thank him for and sometimes while all this way I start I kneel and say Lord thank you for all you've done for me but one day I'll reach heaven sure. Oh, please, let me live once more. I got so much to thank Him for. And I've got so much to thank Him for. So much to praise Him for. You see, He's been so good to me and when I think I think of what he's done and where he brought me from I've got so much to thank him for and I've got so much to thank him for so much to praise him for you see he's been so good to me and when i think i think of what he's done and where he brought me from i've got so much to thank him the church and I've got so much to thank him for so much to praise him for you see he's been so good to me and when I think of what he's done and where he brought I've got so much to thank Him for, 
And I've got so much to thank Him for. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Give Him a hand. Praise the Lord. I want us to do it one more time and uh, just kind of uh, just close your eyes with me this morning, would you? And uh, let's just think about it. I think you know the words. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place. I'm a
Pastor Mark's coming to preach. Oh, it's good to be in God's house. It's so good today to be in His house. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 It kind of reminds me when we play music a lot. And, uh, if you do a lot of intros and stuff like that, and I had a good old fella that we played music with, and uh, I'd forget it, and he turned around looking at me, and he go. They're doing a little bit of that, but uh, don't you appreciate these guys? I, I appreciate them, and uh, it makes it easy for me to worship, and I know you too. And uh, aren't you glad for the blood stains? Thank God for those blood stains. And I thank you more, and even more than that. I thank you for that blood that washed me white as snow. Amen. I have a source of strength when I am weak. It pulls me through. When life keeps pressing me And I have a source Of power from above I'm covered over By a shield of blood I claim the blood That Jesus shed on Calvary Those precious blood stains made there just for me For all my sin my sickness and all my pain When I need healing I claim those precious blood How the others make it through Who do not go to Calvary like we do For there a mighty cleansing healing stream still flows With peace that only is redeemed he made no I claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary those precious blood stains were made there just for me for all my sin my sickness and my when I need healing, I claim those precious blood stains. I claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary. Those precious blood stains were made there just for me. For sickness and every pain when I need healing I claim those precious blood stains for all my sin all my sickness and every pain when I need healing I claim those precious blood stains I claim
Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Good to see you all out today. Amen. How many love Jesus today? Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Just a couple quick announcements. Uh, one, if you don't have it on your calendar yet, the first Sunday in December, we'll have a Christmas meal here. And uh, I'm sure the church will provide the meat and all that kind of stuff. And you guys can help provide some of the fixings. Uh, Holly, maybe give you a little more about that later on or next week. Next week. Or Marty or somebody, some Marcy, somebody. Somebody will tell you about it, amen? And uh, so just listen up. Uh, this Wednesday, there'll be no church service this Wednesday night. We usually take off the Wednesday night before Thursday, uh, Thanksgiving, because everybody's busy. And my wife has done told me, I need you all week long, amen. So you all know how that works, I think. But uh, anyway, we're glad you're here today. I know you're looking forward to a good Thanksgiving meal and some time with your family, and, uh, and I am too, as well as everybody else, amen. Let me just read you some Thanksgiving scriptures here before we get started. I've got a simple message, a short message today, at least fairly short. <clears throat> I've still got a weak voice, so I'm trying to protect that just a little bit, so that's part of it. First Chronicles 16, 8, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. First Chronicles 16, 34, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Psalm 26, 7, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. Psalm 30, verse 12, to the end, of my to the end that my glory may may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O oh, Lord, my God, I will give thanks to thee forever. Want some New Testament? Here they come. 2 Corinthians 4, 15. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. <clears throat> Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. Colossians 2, 7, rooted and building up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Colossians 4, 2, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Revelation chapter 7, verse 12, saying amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now two more, and I'll apply these to the message today. Psalm 118, verse 1, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever ever in verse 24 this is the day which the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it father we thank you today for the reading of the word lord uh you said it wouldn't go out and return void it'll accomplish this purpose so we say have your way with this message today in this house and through the internet we ask you to reach out and touch souls lord let us be a thankful people we still got so much to be thankful for uh, you've blessed us abundantly, Lord, and we just give you glory and praise and honor for that. In Jesus' name, and everybody said uh, amen. If I was going to put a title on this message, I would call it Thanksgiving Can Change Your Life. Thanksgiving Can Change Your Life. Uh, I heard a story. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories today, more so than I normally do. And partly it's because I don't have a preaching voice. But anyway, uh, it was the day before Thanksgiving. An elderly man in Phoenix called his son in New York. He said to him, he said, I hate to ruin your day today, but I got to tell you, your mother and I are divorcing. He said, 45 years of misery is enough. He said, we're sick of each other, so I need you to call your sister in Chicago and let her know. Well, the son was frantic. He called his sister. She exploded on the phone. She said, like heck, they're getting divorced. He said, I'm going to take care of this when she called Phoenix immediately. She talked to her dad. She said, you are not getting divorced. Do not do a single thing till I get there. Uh, I'm calling my brother back. We'll both be there tomorrow. Until then, please don't do anything. Dad, do you hear me? The man hung up the phone. He turned to his wife, and he said, okay, honey. He said, the kids are coming home for Thanksgiving, and they're both playing for their own airfare. <laughs> <clears throat> 
Thanksgiving, amen. They were all going to be gathered together. We're going to have our families together. Hopefully, we'll remember to do more than just eat a meal and watch a little football and make a, da- a mad dash for the uh, mall sometime over the weekend, amen. Uh, Thanksgiving holiday. It's a perfect opportunity for us to transform our lives uh, from griping and dissatisfaction into lives of joy and gratitude. Uh, Thanksgiving, it's a good holiday for us to turn the corner and become a grateful people, amen. Uh, Do you know that God wants us to be nothing more than grateful and and have an attitude of thanksgiving and uh, a great attitude? Somebody said one time, a thankful spirit is one of the key distinguishing marks of a Christian. It sets us apart from a world, from the world. Uh, It makes us different. Uh, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, the NIV says, uh, his love endures forever. How many know his love and his mercy endures forever? And that ought to be enough right there to make us thankful. Uh, so I'm going to give you some benefits today of having a thankful spirit and maybe some reasons why you ought to have one. Amen. Uh, number one, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 well, let me just say it this way. I'll start it out this way. Uh, why do you think being a thankful person is so important? Amen. Uh, it's because gratefulness is good for us. Uh, I said gratefulness is good for us. Uh, uh, now, there are many ways that a grateful person can benefit, uh, and, uh, and we're going to explain some of those today. Number one, it will increase your personal happiness. Uh, how many like to be a little happier over the next year, oh man? If you'll learn to quit grumbling and mumbling and complaining and start being thankful and grateful for everything, I'll guarantee you, you will be a happier person at the end of the year, amen? Uh, most of us think of our happiness happiness, uh, and we think of it being determined by our circumstances. Uh, So if I were to ask you this morning on a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you right now? Uh, Some of you would say a 1, or some of you might say a 2. There might be some others up there someplace, uh, or a 3, and it's all because of my circumstances. Uh, And then you know what you do? You begin to list all of your unfortunate circumstances, all the trouble and trial. Uh, I mean, uh, I've got to go to the doctor, and the kids are sick, and they're still ornery, and and they don't have money to pay the bills, and all those kind of things. Uh, Guess what? You can still be grateful and be in the middle of all those kind of situations, amen? Uh, 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 We've been taught that our happiness uh, is somehow dependent on how well things go for us, uh, but really our happiness is determined by our attitude. How many good attitudes do we have in here today? Amen. A lot of good ones, I hope. Amen. Uh, It really is uh, how you see things. Um, The Apostle Paul wrote these words, listen, from prison. Yes, I said prison, amen. Here's what he said, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Uh, Paul was happy uh, in spite of being in prison. Uh, He learned to thank God in everything, uh, and it was really, my friends, his perspective on life. How many know your perspective will make a difference? Heard a story about a young lady. She wrote her mom from college. Uh, She said, dear mom, I'm sorry I haven't written you sooner. My arm really is broken. I broke it and my left leg too when I jumped out of the second floor from my dormitory. We had a fire. We were lucky though. A young service station attendant saw the blaze and he called the fire department. Uh, They were there in minutes. Uh, I was in the hospital a few days. Paul, the service station attendant, came to see me every day. And because it was taking so long to get our dormitory livable again, I moved in with him. He's been so nice. I must admit, Mom, that I'm now pregnant, and Paul and I plan to get married just as soon as he can get a divorce. I I hope things are fine at home. I'm doing fine, and I'll write more when I get the uh, chance. Uh, Love your daughter, Susie. And then down at the bottom it said, P.S. Mom, none of the above is true, but I did get a C in sociology and I flunked chemistry. I just wanted you to receive the news in its proper perspective. (laughs) 
happiness. Uh, sometimes it's determined by our perspective and not necessarily our life circumstances. Uh, and if we learn to be a grateful people despite our circumstances, uh, it will greatly improve your happiness. Amen? Uh, now, not only will it improve your happiness, but let me tell you, a grateful person, uh, it will improve your witness for Christ. How many like to be a better witness for the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen? Uh, having a notice countenance of joy and thankfulness will make you a better witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And what's sad is that many Christians are, and, 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 and oftentimes they are some of the most negative, uh, sour people in the world. Amen. Uh, I mean, I've seen some mean-spirited Christians. How about this? I've been a mean-spirited Christian. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen. Uh, 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 sometimes it looks like we've been baptized in lemon juice instead of the Holy Spirit, and it's no wonder that nobody wants anything to, to do with us. Amen. But when we're thankful and when we're joyful and when we're an upbeat people, we will attract the loss with our spirit of gratitude because the world is so dark and the world is so depressing and the world is so ungrateful. Uh, I mean, come on. Has anybody looked at the world today? Uh, people are discouraged. Uh, yet if we can learn to be different and we can learn to be upbeat, upbeat and we can learn to be thankful, uh, we will attract them because we have something they don't have. Listen to what 1 Peter 2.12 says. Live such good lives among the pagans. Now that's us, isn't it? Among the pagans that they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Uh, living a life of thanksgiving will attract the lost. Uh, being a grateful person will also enhance your relationships. Uh, how many like to have better relationships? Whether it's with your family, whether it's with your friends, whether it's with your uh, neighbors, whether it's with the, uh, the lady that waits on you at Kroger's or whatever the case may be. Uh, there's one thing. How many like to have a better relationship with your spouse? I heard an amen over here somewhere. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. There's one thing I've noticed about married couples. <clears throat> After a while, many of them become ungrateful and unappreciated of their spouses, and they begin to take each other for granted. Somebody described the first few years of marriage this way. The husband, seeing his wife has a cold, says, You don't look good. You should go to the hospital. I've already arranged it. I know the food is bad, but we're going to have meals catered in to you. The second year, he says, You don't look so good. I've called your doctor. Go and lay down. I'll take care of the t kids. Your doc the doctor will be right over. Third year, he says, You know you're not looking so hot. He said, When you get done feeding the kids and cleaning up the kitchen, you ought to go lay down. The fourth year, he says, would you quit walking around here barking like a seal? You're going to give me your cold. How many know the longer we become familiar with somebody, the less thankful we are for that person? It's true, isn't it? But husbands, imagine how wonderful your marriage would be if you came home one day with some flowers and just told your wife how thankful you are for all that she does. Yeah, I know you'd shock her, but, but that's just the way it is. Wives, imagine how much your marriage would improve if you told your husband how you appreciate him once in a while. Children, think about how much better things would go for you at home if you just told mom and dad once in a while how grateful you are for the money they spend on you, for the gas they spend on you, for the things they buy you, and all the things that they do for you. And by the way, they do a whole lot. Amen. Just imagine how much better churches, even our own church, we could throw in here. We, how many know we always got room for improvement? <clears throat> Churches would be and church relationships would be if we expressed our thanks for one another from time to time instead of picking up on everybody's faults and uh, if we just stopped and became grateful for each other. I want you to think about the Apostle Paul, how he started these letters. <clears throat> Excuse me and bear with me, please. 
He started most of his letters to each of the churches with something like this. To the church at Rome, he said, First, I thank my God for all of you. To the church of Corinth, he said, I thank my God for you. To the church of Ephesus, he said, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. To the church at Philippi, he started his letter out by saying, I thank my God for you uh, every time I remember you. To the church of Col- the Colossal Church, uh, he said, I thank my God when I pray for you. Uh, how many know that Paul learned something about getting along with people, especially in the churches, uh, in the churches that he was overseeing at that time? Uh, he made sure he let the churches know how thankful he was for them. Uh, Imagine how much better our churches would be today uh, and how much better our relationships would be today uh, if we would just express our thanks for each other. Amen. Uh, Look at your neighbor and say, I thank God for you today. Come on. Not all that hard, is it? Another way to uh, uh, have a grateful heart that will benefit you is to solidify your relationship with God. How many of you know that thankfulness will help solidify your relationship with God? Uh, and that should be a top priority in your life. Uh, somebody said one time that God lives in two places. Uh, he lives in heaven and in a humble and grateful heart. Uh, Hebrews twelve twenty five says it this way. Uh, Let us please God by serving him with thankful hearts. Let us please God by serving him with thankful hearts. Uh, You know what I found in my life, and I'm sure you found it in your life, uh, that there are times, not near enough times, but there are times when I have an overwhelming need to just say, thank you, Lord. I mean, something happens to me, and I just can't get enough thank yous out, if you know what I'm talking about. It's thank you, Lord, for what you have done for me. Thank you, Lord, uh, for keeping me from getting run over just then or doing this stupid thing I just did, uh, and something bad didn't happen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, In other words, there's a desire in me to give thanks for something uh, that either God has done for me or maybe it's even something that I have had. Do you know even an atheist has a need that they thanks once in a while but have you ever seen an atheist give thanks true story Harriet Martineau is an atheist. One morning, she and a Christian friend stepped out into the, into the glories of a beautiful morning. Harriet saw the beautiful sunlight peeking through the haze, uh, frost on the meadow, uh, brightly colored leaves falling down to the ground. She was filled with the beauty and burst forth and said, I am so thankful. I'm just so grateful for it all. And her believing friend asked this question, grateful to whom, my dear? Grateful to whom? I can't imagine being an atheist. I sure am glad I'm not one. You say, what's the point? The point is simply this. There's something on the inside of each one of us that needs and wants to give thanks to Almighty God. Uh, And when I spend time giving thanks to God, I feel close to Him, and I'm sure you do too. Uh, And I think that's why uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, uh, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Uh, It is God's plan, uh, part of God's purpose for your life. Uh, is for you to give thanks to him uh, and that's just the way he made us Uh, and so how do I develop a thanksgiving uh, or a heart of thanksgiving in my life what are some of the things that can help me uh, become a grateful person well first of all uh, if you want to be more thankful you need to remember that every single thing we have is from God every single thing we have is from God We need to acknowledge that everything we have is God's, not ours. Psalm 24, verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And when you do this, it reminds us that it's a privilege that God has loaned us everything that we have. 1 Corinthians 4, 7 says, What do you have that you did not receive from God? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not not receive it from God? Amen? I heard a story about a poor man one time. He was given a loaf of bread. He thanked the baker. 
The bank baker said, don't thank me. He said, thank the miller that made the flour. So he went down to the miller and he thanked the miller, but the miller said, don't thank me. Thank the farmer that planted the wheat. Uh, so he went down to the farmer and he thanked the farmer and the farmer said, don't thank me. Thank the Lord. Uh, he gave us the sunshine and the rain, the fertility of the soil. And that, my friends, is why you have bread. Uh, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus uh, concerning you. Uh, every, <coughs> excuse me, every single thing that we own, we ultimately re receive from God uh, and we owe Him thanks for it. Uh, James 1.17 says it this way, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, uh, who does not shift like the sinking sand. The second way that you need that you can be uh, 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 more thankful is uh, is you need to avoid complaining. Out your amen, right there. I read a story. So another pastor did this. Maybe we ought to do it here. He asked his uh, church to fast for six weeks, not from food, not from water. But I want you to not complain one time for six weeks. How many say it'd be easier to fast from food for six weeks than it would to not complain? Amen? He said, I started asking everybody how they were doing. They all had to admit that they had failed some, but it had improved their quality of life when they quit complaining and started praising. Amen? Listen, complaining will steal your faith, it'll steal your joy, it'll steal just about everything. It, it will make you miserable in every situation, amen? That's what complaining does. Somebody said this, and I think it's a true statement. He said, I used to think people complained because they had a lot of problems. But I've come to realize that we have a lot of problems because we complain. Now think about that. You want more problems? Just complain a little bit more. Amen? Complaining won't change anything. Amen? It will not make your situation better. As a matter of fact, it'll amplify fr uh, frustration. Uh, it'll spread discontent and discord. Uh, and it will give an invitation to the devil to come and cause more havoc in your life. Uh, complaining will make you miserable. Psalm 77 verse 3. I complained. One ver verse says groan, but I complained. And my spirit was overwhelmed. Uh, if you want to be a little more overwhelmed, just keep on complaining, amen? Uh, complaining is the arch enemy of thanksgiving. Uh, the two cannot exist at the same time. Uh, and so I challenge each of you to quit complaining for a month. Uh, just try it. Uh, when you feel tempted to complain, uh, instead of filing your complaint, file a praise. Uh, it will change your life. Philippians 2.14, do everything without complaining complaining or arguing uh, so that you may become blameless and pure. Anybody want to be blameless and pure? Do everything without complaining or arguing uh, so you will become blameless and pure children of God uh, without fault in a crooked and depraved generation uh, in which you shine like stars in the universe. That's pretty strong preaching right there if you just uh, try to meditate on that for a little bit. One last thing I want to give you that will help produce a spirit of thanksgiving is develop a daily discipline of giving thanks. In order to be a thankful people, we've got to start giving thanks every day. Not just on Thanksgiving Day, not just on Sunday, not just when things go right, not just once a year. We need to discipline ourselves to find something every day we can be thankful for and express that thanks to God. Uh, put a journal together. Put a file on your computer. List all the things that God has done for you. Call it a praise file if you want to. Uh, but but thanksgiving must become a daily habit. Ephesians 5, 19, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Uh, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. Uh, always is the key word there, not just on thanksgiving and not just when things are going good. In Daniel chapter 6, we read that Daniel got down on his knees three times a day and he prayed and he gave thanks to God three times a day. 
I wonder how many, if any of us, do that. The only time in our lives we give thanks sometimes is on Thanksgiving Day or when something goes good for us, amen. Uh, we need to count our blessings like the old song says. Uh, when upon life's billows you are tempted to toss, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one. It will surprise you what the Lord has done. Thanksgiving should be a daily discipline. Now listen, I just recently read some of these things, and I want to just share them with you. I read that if you own one Bible, you are abundantly blessed because one-third of the people in the world still do not have access to a Bible. If you woke up this morning with more health than illness, you're more blessed than one million people who will not survive this week. If you've never experienced the danger of war, the loneliness of imprisonment, the agony of torture, the pangs of star starvation, you are more fortunate than 500 million people on earth today. If you have food in your refrigerator, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, and $20 in your pocket, and a place to sleep, you are richer than 75% of the world. Somebody say, oh, God, forgive me when I whine and mumble and complain. I found a list of questions that we ought to ask ourselves sometime, kind of put us to test to find out if we're a grateful person or not. Which do you tend to talk about more, your blessings or your disappointments? Are you a complainer, always grumbling, always finding fault in your circumstances? Are you content with what you have or always dissatisfied and wanting more? Do you find it easier to count your blessings or easier to count your afflictions? Do you express thanks to others when they help you or do you take it for granted as your due? Would others say you are a thankful com person or a complaining person? Just ask your spouse. Story, true story, told by another preacher, not by me. It's the story of Lois Stalling. He said she was the most thankful person that he knew. Lois went to his church, said when Lois was in the prime of her life, she had a stroke. She was confined to a wheelchair. She's still mentally alert, but she can't walk and she can't do a lot of other normal activities. She lives in a convalescence home. Can you imagine going to a convalescence home when you're, say, 35 years old and staying there the rest of your life? She said, he said the only time she gets to go out is once a week to come to church. The highlight of her week is Sunday morning when somebody comes and picks her up and takes her to church. One day, I had to go pick up Lois because uh, other people couldn't do it. It's sometimes hard to get her into my car because I drive a compact car. We couldn't get her in if it wasn't for her slide board. A slide board is a fiberglass board that fits under her legs and allows her to slide from the wheelchair to the car fairly easily. It's nothing uh, fancy. It's just an inexpensive piece of fiberglass. One day, Lois pulled me to side and said, Pastor, do you know what I thank God for every single day? He said, what? She said, I thank God for my slide board because it's the only way I get to come to church. How many got something more to thank God for than a slide board? Amen. Amen. So here's Lois. <clears throat> She's got all the reasons in the world to be angry and bitter about her circumstances. Uh, she might even have some justified reasons to shake her fist at God, at least according to some folks in the world. But instead of doing that, she's thankful for what little blessing she has. Uh, she even takes time to thank God for her slide board. She has counted her blessings. How about you? How many know it's time to quit complaining no matter what kind of nervous, uh, negative circumstances you are in? 
The Bible says, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God. Uh, you know what that tells me? How many know the Bible's given us to, uh, as an example, amen? Uh, that means if I'm Paul and Silas in a jail cell, I can still give thanks. Uh, if I'm Daniel in a lion's den, I can still give thanks. Uh, if I'm the three Hebrew boys getting ready to go into a fiery furnace, I can still give thanks. Uh, when the money runs out and I'm short, I can still give thanks. Uh, when the doctor's report is not what I wanted to hear, I can still give thanks. Uh, when the boss looks at me and says, you're fired, uh, I can still give thanks. Amen. Uh, uh, it, 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 if, the, if my children are on drugs, I don't give thanks for the drugs, but I can still give thanks. Amen. Uh, 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 life may seem to give me a bad hand, uh, but even then I can still give thanks. Uh, I might have some aches and pains in my body, but I can still still give thanks uh, because all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Uh, in everything give thanks because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus uh, concerning you. Uh, I may not have enough bedrooms but I can thank God for the ones that I have. Uh, my kitchen may not be big enough for Thanksgiving dinner uh, but I can still thank God for the one that I have. Uh, the electric bill might be too high uh, but thank God I'm still warm and God provided the money to, to pay for it. Amen. Uh, that old clunker I drive might have a little rust on it. Uh, it may frustrate me to pieces on some days, uh, but it's still transportation. And I can still give thanks. Uh, how about thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, thank you for my home. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my vehicles. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my health. Uh, I may have got a bad report from the doctor, but guess what? Uh, I'm still breathing. I'm here this morning. Uh, God's not done with me yet. Uh, I may look defeated, but I'm not because 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, uh, now thanks be to God, uh, which always causes us to triumph in Christ uh, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge uh, by us in every place. Uh, I may be tired, uh, but thanks be to God. Uh, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. Uh, they'll run and not be weary and they'll walk and not faint. Uh, thank you, Lord, for my wife. Thank you, Lord, for my children. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, Kenny didn't say it, but for 69 years of living, uh, and I really am going on 70 now. Amen. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, but most of all, 2 Corinthians 9, 15, uh, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Psalm 35, 18, I'll quit here. I will give thanks in the great congregation, and I will praise you among the people. Church, we got a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, we got a lot to complain about, but I'm going to suggest to you, uh, just put your complaining away. Uh, most of the stuff you complain about, you can't do anything about anyway. Uh, you can pray for it, but no need to complain about it. It won't help you one bit. God bless you. Would you stand to your feet this morning? Tim, come on up if you would. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, if you don't know his unspeakable gift, I'm here to tell you the best decision you'll ever make in your life uh, is to ask Jesus to come into your heart, to save your soul, uh, to make you a new person in Christ Jesus. Uh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creature. The old things pass away and all things become new. If you've never done that, I want you to say this prayer out loud after me. And if you mean it in your heart, God will come into your heart, change your life. If you're listening on the internet and you need Jesus in your life, say this prayer and God will make a big change in your life. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I want to get saved. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. I ask you to come into my heart right now. I repent this day, and I receive you as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, for all the rest of us, one more prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, help me quit complaining. Help me quit grumbling. Quit mumbling and quit complaining. And help me to become a more thankful and grateful person. In Jesus' name. 
Now, if you said either one of those prayers, I can tell you right now, if you met them in your heart, God will come in. He will help you and change your life. Gratitude can change your life. Thanksgiving can change your life. Being grateful can change your life all for the better. And we'll just cut this internet off now. And if you have a need right now and you want to come up for prayer, just, just, just say these altars are open. My Bible says we're to agree as touching anything.